four teenage boys, one borrowed car in the late 90s. The city was our playground. Until one night rejection. Y'all always say that. No, for real, I'm on my period. A dare. Oh, really? Let me see. Oh, what the fuck? I told you. Young masculine audacity led to the homie running down the street and us chasing him since he was our ride home. Trash the Peace Theater, a womb with a view. The only thing as good as having a car when you're younger is one of your homies getting a car. There was nothing wrong with Scepter, and by that I mean Scepter was horrendous, but we managed to endure it. Lil Derek was the first I remember to have access to a car. Legally. Big Derek let his son drive our crazy asses around on the weekends. Riding around with Lil Derek was always an adventure. He'd do goofy stuff like fart in the car, lock the windows, and turn the heat up. Oh, come on with this sh**. What? Smells like flowers. It smells like mulch. We would pull up to a corner with some of the baddest joints, then crack the windows and play some of the most absurd music you ever heard. I hate you so much. Feel the groove, Perry. I'm sure every city had their roller skating rink where kids gathered to gyrate on each other without adult supervision. We had Carmen's in North and Elmwood down Southwest Philly, but the one everybody was trying to get to was Wild up on the boulevard. When we were little, folks threw skating parties at Wild and we actually skated. But as we got older, no one skated. You just went up there to show off your new fit and grind on random joints from different neighborhoods. The commute on the bus up there was the worst. You had to catch the 33 to the R to the 14 or the 20. But on the quest for stranger than normal cakes, we made do with that two hour trek. It was only 25 minutes with the car though. Me and the fellas always had good luck in bagging baddies, but it increased so much more once Lil Derek started driving. We became multi-communal thotties, spreading the good boy word all around the city. And lo, the fuckboy gospel rang true. For he who knows no geographic boundary shall spread the good word. And legs. Nigelations 923. So there's one night we was chilling on the block when Lord Derek rolled up in the car. Y'all trying to go a while? Man, it's too late. By the time we get up there, it's not going to be worth it. And by that I meant I ain't want to spend my money and not be able to grind on somebody's door to buy the lockers. Let's just go post up outside and get the joints when they come out. Oh, we out. We pulled up to the parking lot and it was chill. Everyone was still inside, so we just posted on the car and cracked jokes. There was another car who clearly had the same idea we had, except it was for young women. So of course, being the young, strapping, virile men we were, we went right at them. Well, if this ain't fate, one for each of us. Four on four, check rock. We each went at a different joint and were happy to find out they were from West Philly. Please, because back then it was a flex to say you had to join from West Philly since they had the reputation for having the baddest joints in the city, after my own area, of course. And please, because since they weren't from around our way, we had to worry about them interfering with the other joints we had. We chopped it up with them joints, and each one of us got their respective numbers. But more importantly, we hooked up a time to go link with them later. Apparently, they got what they came for and was ready to leave after giving us their numbers. I think they expected us to do the same. So you're not leaving? No, they try to get more numbers. Oh, nah, that ain't it. Yes, it is. Hooking up with us later ain't good enough. So y'all just greedy. No, um, P little sister in there. We just try to make sure don't nobody mess with her. Is that true, Perry? Oh, yeah. We about to fuck some niggas up if we got to. I don't play that shit about my sister. Around in your pee. Too much dip on the chip. Bruh. Y'all are so sweet, handsome, and protective. Can't wait to see you later, big guy. They pulled off, and the homies were just looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> you gotta relax, dude. Yeah, I know. I'm not good with improv lying. You need to work on that. It wasn't long before folks started leaving wild. And while all the boys was walking to the bus stop afterwards, we were posted on the car with John surrounding us. Back then, it didn't matter what the car was. In fact, it didn't even matter if it was yours. I was just car adjacent and enjoying the spoils. It was our first introduction to playing the let out, AKA parking lot pimping. 
while scores of disappointed dudes scurried across the 12 lane boulevard to catch their buses, we filled our quota of phone numbers. Happy trails, dickheads. Sucks to suck. Afterwards, we decided to push back to the block. But on the way, I got a beat from a West Philly number. Yo, I think this them Johns. Lord Derek pulled over and I hit the pay phone. It was indeed the shorties who were posted with us. John told me she had the house to herself and to come through with the fellas. Y'all trying to go out west to get them Johns? Where they at? Little block off 53rd and race. Probably not smart to go out there this time of night, bro. Yeah, pulling up and getting out four deep might have those niggas on edge out there. Word. It could be a setup. Like, what if they were up wild to find some dudes to bring back to their block and have them robbed? Yeah. Yeah, you, you know what? We can see them joins another time. Let's play it safe. Yeah, let's play it safe. Word. Play it safe. And we did. Not play it safe. We smooth one out there after midnight. The only thing safe we were trying to have was sex with them Jones. Stupid is you stupid does, sir. She lived on this little ducky block off 52nd and Arch. Ironically, a half block over from where the Badu Colt Jones block was. We scoped the scene, saw no one out, and walked down the block to get to her spot got to the house and they were waiting for us we went in and went straight to the bedroom yo your mom not home this is my spot wait you said you had the house to yourself this weekend yeah my daughter's with her dad oh oh back then it wasn't super common for young joints to have babies but it was the second joint i messed with who had her own spot we all spread out in her bedroom and started revving up with the joints we had bagged as we were all about to seal the deal, I could hear Derek's joint tell him she was on her period. Y'all always say that. No, for real, I'm on my period. She really is. I don't believe you. Y'all always say that. Y'all tease us, get us going, and then drop the period line so you don't have to finish what you started. Okay, so that was definitely a thing back then. Jones would get you harder than finite math, then just leave you stiff and bewildered, telling you she's surfing the sangria tsunami. I guess D had reached his limit on hearing that excuse and drew a hard line in his pants. I'm very serious. Oh really? Let me see. John and Derek walked down the hallway. In an instant, Stime, June, and I and our respective Johns went back to what we were doing. A little kissing, a little petting, a little unbuttoning, and a little reaching into my pocket for the condom. Then boom. Oh, what the fuck? I told you. You nasty ass. You didn't believe me. We were dying. You could hear him in the next room dry heaving. Oh my God, oh my God. It looks like strawberry preserves. Well, I'll never have an English muffin again. You're so dramatic. Oh, fuck this. Derek broke out down the stairs and out the door. We went back to hooking up with the girls we were with and then they all hit us at the same time. That was our ride home. If we stayed and got laid, we'll have to hop the bus home. If you from Philly, you know SEPTA after midnight is a damn fever dream. Shit just got real. We bolted out the door and down the street chasing after him. We finally caught up with Derek at the car. He was still in shock having a full on panic attack. The entire way back to the block, he was just mumbling and mortified. She wasn't lying. She wasn't lying. I know bro, I know. Thime Jr. and I were trying to be there for our friend, but we were low-key laughing at the whole absurd thing. It's going to be okay, bro. Oh, no, it's not. I love English muffins. Bro. If any of us was driving aside from him, I think we would have just 302 would homie and dropped him off at the nearest inpatient. What seems to be the problem? He saw a woman's period for the first time. Botting? Day one, I think. Dear God. He dropped his back at the block and sped off. We just had to laugh at the entire situation. The good news is, it didn't seem to have any lasting effects. He had a couple of amazing sisters, so maybe they gave him some game on the female reproductive system when he got home. Either way, he was himself the next day and those after. I talked to the joint a couple more times after that, but we never did seal the deal. Apparently, someone on the block let her child's father know there were some dudes over his baby mom's crib. So either the boy got his stuff together and moved back home, or she was lying and he still lived there but was out of town for the night. As for us, that was the last time we trivialized a woman's cycle. I'm on my period. Yes, you are. Have an amazing evening.
consent was consent and no meant no without reason or rebuttal because the wise boy heedeth the warning of the blood moon lest ye be smote with the shame of thy disbelief Ecclesiastics 2.13 Thank you for watching Trash the Beast Theater. I hope you got a few laughs from this joint. And if so, please help me out by hitting that subscribe button and dropping a like. It helps way more than you know. If you want to support the channel further, you can join the Patreon, become a member of the channel and receive bonus episodes, leave a super thanks, or just drop a dollar or ten in the cash app. I'm grateful for any and all of the above.